Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Welcome back to the range. A while back, I posted a video featuring my Ruger 22 long rifle chambered LCRX with the three inch barrel, double action revolver. And then a few weeks later, I posted a video featuring a viewer's Smith & Wesson Model 63, which is also a 22 long rifle chambered three inch barrel, double action revolver. And on this second video, I got a lot of comments from folks wanting to see both these revolvers together in the same video for like a side-by-side -side comparison. So I'm going to do that for you today. But first of all, I want to say if you have chosen either one of these two revolvers, you have chosen wisely. If you haven't narrowed down to these two revolvers and that you're, you're going to make a choice between one of these two, you can't really go wrong. Both of these are great revolvers in their own rights. A lot of similarities, but also a lot of differences. I'll try to cover as many of those as I can off the top of my head down here today. I'm gonna to move the camera over to the table, give you guys an overhead view so that you can see these guns real nice and clear while I'm talking about them. And I'll just give you a quick rundown of what I know. I'll keep a lot of it factual, but I'll, I'll throw in a little bit of opinion along the way. Then at the end of the video, I don't know, we'll talk about maybe if I could only have one of these, which one it would be. So let's go ahead and get the ball rolling here. All right, so I'm gonna start by covering some of the similarities of these revolvers or some of the things they have in common. And then I'll work into some of their differences. I'm sure I'll leave some things out. I always do that in my videos. There's a, always something I wish I would have covered that I didn't or said that I didn't. That's just the nature of the beast. But I think I can talk about these two revolvers enough that you guys will have a pretty good understanding of the similarities and differences by the time this video is over. So we'll start out with the obvious here. They both have three inch barrels. They are both double action revolvers. They both have exposed hammers which means that you can cock the hammer and fire it in single action if you wish. They're both chambered for eight rounds of 22 long rifle. And they're both roughly the same size. They're very close in size. Ruger lists the LCRX as being seven and a half inches in overall length. Smith & Wesson lists the Model 63 as being seven and a quarter inches in overall length. So technically, the Ruger LCRX is a little bit bigger. It's also a little bit beefier feeling, but they are close enough in size that I'm gonna say for this video, for all intents and purposes, these revolvers are the same size. The Ruger is just a fraction bigger. They both have cylinders that turn counterclockwise. They both have nice, fully adjustable rear sights. See the elevation screw on top? The windy screw on the side. Same thing with the Smith & Wesson. Square notch, just like on the Ruger. Elevation adjustment on top. Windage adjustment on the side. So, now I'll talk about some of the differences. Again, we'll start with the obvious. The Smith & Wesson Model 63 is old school stainless steel construction, meaning the frame is stainless steel, the cylinder is stainless steel, and the barrel is stainless steel. While the Ruger utilizes modern manufacturing techniques and materials to achieve a very light weight revolver, it uses a polymer grip frame, an aluminum frame, and it uses steel where it has to, it's got a stainless steel barrel insert and a steel cylinder, and it's got other steel parts as well, trigger and hammer, sights. But the bottom line is they use steel where they had to and lightweight materials where they could. So speaking of weight, 
The stainless steel Smith & Wesson comes in at 24.8 ounces, while the Ruger comes in at 17.3 ounces. Now, 7.5 ounces might not seem like much, but I can tell you guys, standing here holding both of these revolvers, that Ruger is light years lighter than the Smith & Wesson as far as feel. So 7.5 ounces is a lot when you're only talking about a couple dozen ounces to begin with. I also noticed that the Smith & Wesson gives us a recessed crown, while the Ruger does not. Now my Ruger LCRX 22 Magnum has the recessed crown, but the 22 Long Rifle does not for whatever reason. The Smith & Wesson also gives us a full length ejector rod. Check out that extractor travel. while the Ruger uses the same length ejector rod as it does on its snubby LCRs. Not much travel there at all. Now you don't need a full length ejector for 22 long rifle, but it is nice and I do prefer the full length ejector rod. Looking at the cylinder latches here, the Smith & Wesson uses the push forward to open while the Ruger uses the press in to open. The Smith & Wesson comes standard with a fiber optic front sight. It is pinned in place there, so you could change it if you wanted to. While the Ruger comes with the ramped target style front sight. And it does come with that white stripe on there. I didn't add that. That is factory. And it is also pinned in place. The grips on these revolvers. The, they're both good grips. The Smith & Wesson. I can get a full three finger grip on. Of course it's got the finger grooves. You may or may not like that. The Ruger uses the Hogue Tamer grips. Again, full three finger grip. The Smith & Wesson comes with a key. There's the key hole. You can actually lock the gun up. Uh, that's something that I don't think I would ever have a use for, but the Ruger does not come with that. I actually, I'm glad it doesn't. I actually don't prefer the keyhole, I'm just mentioning it as a difference between the two revolvers. The triggers, the Ruger has a, a state-of-the-art trigger. They actually break this thing up as a no-stack trigger, but it's very heavy. On my Ruger LCRX review video on the 22 long rifle, I did some trigger pulls with the trigger scale. I've got that on video. You can watch that if you want. I'll link the video review of this revolver and this revolver in the description below but a single action pull on this revolver comes in at six pounds four ounces the double action pull i couldn't measure it's it's it goes off my scale but i'm guessing it to be about 16 pounds very heavy trigger even if it is stack free the smith and wesson on the review video i've done of it I did the same thing, and the single action pull on the Smith & Wesson is 3 pounds even, and the double action trigger pull is 12 pounds. These revolvers are both very safe to carry. They're both drop safe. The Ruger uses the transfer bar safety. There's a transfer bar connected to the trigger that slides up in between the frame mounted firing pin and the hammer. The hammer can only make contact with the transfer bar if the trigger is pulled. So the hammer makes contact with the transfer bar, the transfer bar makes contact with the firing pin, sets the round off. If the trigger is not pulled, the transfer bar is not up high enough for the hammer to make contact with it. Therefore, the transfer bar doesn't make contact with the firing pin. The Smith & Wesson has its own safeties. It has a hammer block which works basically the opposite as a transfer bar. 
when you pull the Smith & Wesson trigger to the rear, the hammer block falls out of the way so that the hammer can make contact with the firing pin and set the round off. So you've got two very reliable safeties in these revolvers. They're just kind of opposite of one another. But that's about all I wanted to talk about as far as the differences go. And I'm sure I'm forgetting something. I always do. <laughs> it's not a big deal. You guys help me out in the comments if you know of something that I left out or something like that. But I think I covered the basics so that you guys know the similarities and the differences between these two revolvers. All right, so by this point in the video, I've probably already gotten a couple of comments stating that the Smith & Wesson 317 would make a better comparison against the Ruger LCRX, as the Smith & Wesson 317 is Smith & Wesson's airweight kit gun. And I agree, those two would make a better head-to-head -head comparison of even more similar revolvers. But that's not what people asked to see. When I posted the Model 63 video, people asked to see these two in the same video compared side by side. So if this is one of my first videos that you're watching, that's why I'm featuring these two and not the 317. There's also the fact that I don't currently have a Smith & Wesson 317. So... Moving forward here, the Smith & Wesson has a manufactured suggested retail price of $820, while the Ruger has a manufactured suggested retail price of $699. Price is always a consideration whenever you're doing a head-to-head -head comparison video, and at least with the MSRP, these two have about a $121 price difference between them with the Smith & Wesson being more expensive. Going straight into opinion here, the Smith & Wesson is a better looking revolver, at least to my eye. I love that stainless steel. It's a better shooting revolver. The weight of the revolver helps a little bit with the shooting. The trigger is smoother, the trigger is lighter, just easier to shoot right out of the box than the Ruger. The Ruger takes some, it took me some learning with it. I don't want to say learning. It just took me some getting used to it. I knew how to shoot, but it took me a, a little bit to get used to this revolver. Once I did, if you can shoot this revolver, it makes this one even easier to shoot. The Ruger has the better grip, in my opinion. Again, we're into opinion side of this now. The, the Hogue Tamer grip, it doesn't have any finger grooves, and it is a great feeling grip. Gives you a nice handful of the gun. The Smith & Wesson grip is not bad. I don't mean that. And I am totally aware that you can get aftermarket grips for the Smith & Wesson. We're comparing factory to factory here. In fact, Jason has some aftermarket grips for the Smith & Wesson, but he deliberately sent me the factory grips so that I could do a factory comparison. Which one would I choose? Well, I've already done that. I was in that position and I chose the Ruger. So I can't lie to you guys now and say I'd choose the Smith & Wesson. When I was looking for a three inch barreled 22 long rifle chambered revolver, I was looking at all different guns and I settled on this one. So um, not gonna backtrack on that now and pretend like that I would choose the Smith & Wesson. I had the opportunity to choose the Smith & Wesson. I chose the Ruger. The more, uh, I guess, the, the more correct answer to give you guys on which one you, that you should choose, if you're looking for the lightest weight 3-inch barreled revolver out of these two, obviously the Ruger. If you're going on long backpacking trips, if you're going on long hikes, uh, staying multiple days on the trail, every ounce gets to pulling on you. The Ruger is a much better choice. If you want one that you're just going to take out uh, trail riding or something like that every now and then or fishing where weight is not as critical, the, the Smith & Wesson is going to be the better choice. It'll be easier for you to learn to shoot on. Just uh, You'll probably be able to shoot it more accurately. That's not always going to be the case with everybody, but you probably will. So uh, if you can stand the extra weight choose the Smith & Wesson. If you can't stand the extra weight, choose the LCRX. That's what it boils down to. That's all I've got today. I've already rambled on 
way too long in a non-shooting video. So uh, go ahead and, and close this video out. Thank you guys. Thanks to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate you. Really appreciate my Patreon supporters. That link is always in the description if anybody wants to check it out and, and help the channel out in that way. But that's all I got, and I'll talk with you guys again soon. Thank you.